Hi, Dr. Kulreet. <laughs> so you're already joined. Thank you so much. Yeah, so before I add Dr. Kulreet uh, to this session, I would uh, first of all welcome to Social Connections with Modish. All of you, thank you for joining us here. Today, I'm super thrilled to have Dr. Kulreet Chaudhary uh, for this session because uh, uh, I think it's going to be really beneficial for us, those who are watching it live and who are going to watch it later. So Dr. Nikulri Chaudhary is an integrative neurologist based out of United States of America. And uh, what makes her unique is that uh, she she's a uh, practitioner West uh, by uh, she's a medical practitioner by Western medicine. She has studied that, and uh, but she integrated uh, traditional Ayurvedic practices um, in healing her patients, uh, in curing her patients who were suffering from Parkinson's or Alzheimer's and other neurological disorders. And while doing that, she discovered that the patients were uh, that Ayurvedic practices were not only helping them to uh, cure better with the disease but also they had tremendous amount of other benefits uh, especially weight loss and then she came up with her book the prime which has been exceptionally taken well and received well and uh, in which she discusses about spontaneous weight loss without exerting yourself into following a certain diet routine and we will know much more about that how without following a particular diet your body starts reducing weight and second book she has recently come on is about sound medicine where she talks about how the vibrations produced by the sounds have uh, effect on us and how they can heal us in uh, so many ways. I am super thrilled to um, make Dr. Kulri join with us because I think even if we follow a little bit of information that she, take, uh, that she gives us, uh, it's going to be really beneficial for us. So please join with me, Dr. Kulreet. So Dr. Kulreet uh, will just have to accept our request and then she will be on board with us. Okay, okay. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Hello. Hello, it's such a pleasure to meet you. And how thrilling it is that we're doing this on two different continents. And you have officially introduced me now to Instagram. I have been fighting joining any more social media and you made me do it. <laughs> yes, we actually dragged you here and uh, you will realize the tremendous amount of reach that it can also have apart from Facebook. So I think it was very, very necessary for us to drag you on this. <laughs> <laughs> India, India is always the land that inspires personal transformation. So even in social media, you've accomplished that. So thank you. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Dr. Kudri, first of all, thank you so much to agree to do this session with us and taking oh, up the time from your busy schedule. I think it's at 7.30 a.m. in the United States of America, early morning, and you are up working. So, thank you so much. It inspires me there and then, moreover, that, you know, we should be on our toes. We are such late sleepers and, you know, we don't wake up on time. And this is what we are going to talk about everything uh, yeah. in this session. Very good, very good. I'd love to, and I'd love to explain the influence of sleep on weight when we when we do go to talk about that. Um, because actually, once your body comes into balance, it'll naturally wake up usually between four and five a.m. Yeah, yeah, I know. So you told us about that uh, before, Doctor Guruji. Can you just tilt your camera? Uh, of course, you... of course, of course. Yeah. This Is that better? better? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Now. So... Okay. We are really excited to have you on board and before we, we have a whole plan of what we need to ask you and we will try to take as much information as possible from you because we have really got you with uh, difficulty. So we are not going to lose this chance. So starting, what has really intrigued me when I read about how you uh, got introduced to Ayurveda. So everyone knows that you have studied uh, Western medicine to become a neurologist. So how was uh, your uh, journey into Ayurveda? How did that start? Well, my my journey into Ayurveda really initially it started in my childhood in that my mother had introduced certain Ayurvedic practices, you know, although at that time we really didn't consider it Ayurvedic medicine. It was just natural living. 
And I think if you even look at how your grandmother lived or your great grandmother lived, they were practicing an Ayurvedic lifestyle, but we didn't call it that. That was just kind of, you know, common knowledge. Um, but it wasn't until I became a neurologist and I actually developed migraine headaches. Um, and as I developed migraine headaches as a neurologist, you know, this was no problem because I knew how to treat migraine headaches and I could not get them successfully under control. Either the medication side effects were intolerable or they just weren't working. And so it was at that time that I, I came back to my mom and said, look, I've tried everything. I don't know what to do. And so she had reconnected me back to Ayurveda and it was really just a remarkable transformation because that was the first time I'd ever actually gotten sick in life. So in okay. three months, I didn't have headaches anymore, but in three months, you know, I had lost weight that I didn't even know I had gained. I think we do that, especially when we start getting into our thirties and forties, you start putting on weight that you, you know, you're like, yeah, everything is tighter, but you don't mind. You're not like, you're not going to go out and buy a new wardrobe over it. So I lost weight that I didn't even know that I had gained inflammatory weight. Um, okay. And my creativity, my energy went up and I just said, something really shifted here. It wasn't just the, the absence of headaches, but it was the presence of health. And so that really ignited my, my curiosity as you know, a physician and as a scientist, because I was doing a lot of clinical research. And it really ign ignited my passion that I could provide a better solution to neurological conditions for my patients. Yeah, yeah. So this is so intriguing. So you had headaches and you stopped taking pills for it and rather you took Ayurvedic medicine. So what uh, uh, about uh, like how did it uh, made you feel your like patients were responsive when you started treating them? With you, you know, so this is what I have learned and I think many Western physicians are learning this that our patients pick up on our biases. And so if we're biased against natural medicine, and I wouldn't say I was necessarily biased against it, but I wasn't incorporating it into my practice. But once I started talking about lifestyle changes and you know things like meditation for the management of chronic disease, my patients were so excited to have other options other than just taking a pill because nobody takes a pill and feels fantastic. There's always some side effect associated with it. Yeah. They were so excited. And what I found out was that the majority of my patients were already doing alternative therapies, but they weren't talking to me about them. Yeah. And so it just opened up the lines of communication. You know, it's kind of like having a dominating parent. And that's how oftentimes physicians act. They act like a dominating parent where like the teenager can't tell them what they're really doing. And so I just stopped becoming the dominating parent and I just became a partner in wow. their health journey. And then they just, you know, then all of a sudden they would bring in like 20 bottles of supplements to their visits. And I said, no, 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 this is too complicated. So they were so excited to have somebody that was going to partner with them and that they could be really honest about these are the different things I'm trying. What do you think? So this led to uh, like you wrote your book afterwards, The Prime, which talks about spontaneous weight loss and uh, how you don't have to, you know, um, follow a particular diet chart to which is in India is very prevalent. Like you follow a particular diet, you keep going on diets, off diets, on diets, and you still don't lose weight. Yes. So tell us about the prime and what it specifically tells. So the way that it came about was, you know, after about a decade of doing this, because I was, you know, I'm, I'm a neurologist and I was doing this for neurological conditions. What I found was invariably almost every single one of my patients lost weight. And what I love, and you know, I always believe in just accepting where people are, where society is, and then going with that. My patients, like even my patients with MS, as excited as they were about their increased mobility, their reduction in pain, the fact that, you know, um, they were, have gone from like a using a cane to walking without one, they were so thrilled at the weight loss. <laughs> they, were, they were so exceptionally happy that, you know, I'm wearing the same size I did in high school. I can't believe this. You didn't tell me we were doing a weight loss program. I said, well, you're not doing a weight loss program. You're doing a program to reduce inflammation. You're doing a program to reestablish normal balance in the gut. And yeah. so that, you know, which results in brain health. And so that automatically results in weight loss. And so it's not that you won't make changes in what you're eating. It's just that your mind isn't dictating it. 
when you try to change your mind that for the majority of people we have food addictions because food is now designed to be addictive and that's not anything hidden that's well known yeah but if you are addicted to food and you try to first change the addiction you're going to fail just like in any addiction yeah. and so what we do in this um program is we first change the biochemistry behind the addiction which includes neuroadaptation in the brain to the food as well as changing the gut microbiome. And for people who don't know what the gut microbiome is, it's one of the most important parts of your health. It's the collection of all of the bacteria and other organisms that inhabit your body. And the majority of it lives in your gut. And so your gut microbiome actually dictates by sending signals to your brain what you crave. And so as you slowly start to change who lives in your gut, they start sending signals to your brain to start eating differently. So I won't tell patients, you know, right off the bat, like, okay, give up this, give up that, give up that. But what will happen is as they start the program, they'll go, you know, and you know, I'm in Southern California, so Mexican food, food is huge here, but like, you know, those nachos, I, I usually would eat a whole plate, but now I can only eat two or three, you know, or like in um, Punjab, that's where I'm from, you know, those paronte, I usually eat like three or four or five. And now after one or two, I'm full. So your own body starts to regulate how much you want to eat and what you are craving. Okay. So this is so interesting. You talked about like, I uh, read it and I said, there are two brains. So like the way you said, your biome in the gut would tell your brain how, what you want. So how do you know that you don't have a good gut? <laughs> like whatever <laughs> of it. That so you need to work on your gut biome. Yeah, so there's, there's several things, um, and we include in the book um, a gut IQ test to tell you how smart or dumb your gut is. And, you know, when people take this test, I said, don't worry if you have a dumb gut. I had a very dumb gut when I started. I, was, I had a very smart brain up here, but I had a very dumb brain in my gut. And so there, there's common things. You know, one is just, do you have weight, excess weight? So I don't mean being aiming for being underweight, but do you have excess weight and is it inflammatory weight inflammatory weight is usually squishy weight meaning it's a lot of liquid accumulation in the body um do you get sick often you know okay. are, are you prone to at least getting like one to two upper respiratory tract infections um you know can you wake up spontaneously in the morning feeling refreshed that okay. you know, if you if you go to sleep like, you know, at a normal time, like around a 10 a.m., you should naturally wake up your body. Yeah. So we, sorry, we lost. Yeah. Yes, your, your body should naturally start waking up, you know, between um, 4 to 5 a.m. in the morning. Okay. So, okay, so these are the signs that you know that something's wrong. Like, if you, and also about people take it very lightly, passing gas and burping a lot. So these are also probably not the signs, you know, in India, it's very common. Okay. You know, you just take some digene or jellicin and you're okay with it. But this is also, uh, I mean, inflammation in the body, inflammatory weight is, is a serious thing. Yeah. So how do people, catch, uh, I mean, all these symptoms we are going deep into it so that people take it seriously, you know, yes. that they work on it. So uh, uh, how about, uh, so do these things also like burping? Accessible. All of those things. Yes, all of those signs are of a dumb gut. They're all signs that you're not digesting your food properly. And in Ayurvedic medicine, if you are not digesting your food properly, you are accumulating toxins. And okay. where does the majority of those toxins get stored? In your fat cells. Because the first thing that your body is going to want to do is to remove those toxins away from your, you know, essential organs and move them into the fat so that they can be stored properly. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. all really, really unhealthy. I mean, yeah. Exactly. It's very, very unhealthy. What you don't digest gets stored as toxins. Traditionally in Ayurveda, we call that AMA, A-M-A, -A, you know. Um, and so one of the reasons why the weight loss is spontaneous is the program that I outline in the prime is to remove those toxins. And as your body starts to remove those toxins, the fat cells start to shrink. Your body becomes more efficient at just removing toxins and improving digestion so that there's not the accumulation of future toxins. Yeah. So uh, now we understood why we need to work on it. And we all need to 
buy your book to actually go through this whole personalized take on yourself and that you need to follow but there is a giveaway that you always mention the prime tea that one starts having and you will see the changes can you tell us about that how that yes is, it's very very simple to make and this is actually a classic ayurvedic recipe it's just made out of cumin seeds coriander seeds and fennel seeds um just 1 teaspoon of each for people who think they have a very dumb gut you can start with even half a teaspoon but it's just 1 teaspoon each and you boil that for about 10 minutes in about 4 cups of water strain the liquid out and then um after straining the liquid out you put it in a thermos so it stays warm all day long and then just take small sips of that all day long okay so it's uh, you can sip it all day long yes yeah not so and even starting in the morning even early morning you can have it you can have this all day long and you know i i want to apologize for some reason my phone battery the reason my screen keeps cutting out is my phone battery is saying it's low which is unusual i think this must have just drained my battery um okay. i uh, want to just so, uh can you put it on charging i will yes i was just going to suggest that is there is there a way we could just take a 1 minute pause so i can go grab my charger it's off the screen we'll just wait for you here you can get the charger and just uh if you don't have to move your cell phone that would be in fact yeah there. that's fine i'm going to just yeah. leave this and if you'll just give me one yeah, moment sure. Okay. Yeah, I always have my I always have my laptop my laptop charged up. I didn't have my cell phone charged up completely. Give me just one moment. Yeah, one sure, moment. Sure, sure, sure. So guys, we are learning a lot about uh, uh uh i mean uh, about weight loss and uh, from dr kulri choudhary if you have any questions you can drop us in the comment section and you can ask her so far she has told us how if we don't digest our food properly then it accumulates toxins in our body and uh, how those toxins are ultimately going to affect our mental health our neural health and other aspects so she has written this book the prime in which she mentions about how gut health is a very important part of your body if your gut if your stomach is working fine then you will probably have a emotional balance and uh, you will be uh, mentally strong and other aspects also okay we have her back yeah thank you for covering for me <laughs> no we are just there we go now we're all merged up <laughs> yeah all right yeah so we were on the prime tea recipe that you told that you have to mix 1 teaspoon or half a teaspoon of uh, fennel seeds uh, coriander seeds and um, the third one was it's, it's uh, cumin coriander and fennel seeds cumin yeah cumin coriander and fennel which mm -hmm. are easily available in india like i very very easily available. available and you know what's amazing and i talk about this in the book but if you look at the research that is done on each one of those seeds individually and the benefits the health benefits of yeah. each one of those seeds and the digestive benefits india is so rich in knowledge and when you look at the science behind it because because of something we grew up with we take this very casual like oh cumin oh coriander fennel but when you look at the science behind it it's so miraculous that this is how we have eaten for thousands of years it's such a, an advanced way of taking care of the body yeah yeah and uh, how i mean now the whole west world is getting back to it so it's so uh, now we are looking back at our homemade things and stuff because you know yes. what my you were always right <laughs> yeah. so now coming to the prime tea recipe the basic is this but in case we need certain help with specific things we have a list because we got a lot of dms like what do we take then what herb or spice can we add to the prime tea absolutely to that. so so there's two things do, we can yeah. do sorry go ahead you were you saying something no no please please go ahead um so there's two things um if again when you do the gut iq test or if you have just a lot of weight you know to lose there's two ingredients that you can add one is some fresh ginger and you can just cut up like a a piece that that large you know just some fresh ginger put it in and ginger stimulates the digestive fire it stimulates metabolism so okay. you'll see ginger 
in a lot of recipes for immunity, you know, supplements for immunity, you'll see ginger for a lot of recipes, even for skin care. You'll see ginger for digestive health because ginger helps to remove those toxins in the okay. GI tract and the toxins in the body. So you okay. can add just that much ginger um, if you have a dumb gut or if you are looking to lose a lot of weight. And another wonderful thing is um, fenugreek seeds. I think, um, what are fenugreek? I think they're, what's that? Metidana. Metidana, yes, they're metidana, yeah. <laughs> so fenugreek seeds are phenomenal um, for gas. So for people who do have a lot of gas, you just add a teaspoon of the fenugreek seeds. And fenugreek is amazing for treating wrinkles, you know? I mean, we don't realize a lot of the beauty benefits of, of doing these things. Fenugreek seeds are fantastic for treating diabetes. So there's a lot of advantages to these, you know, natural um, ingredients. So if you okay. have gas or if you just, if you have a dumb gut and you want a stronger program, you can add those two ingredients to it. Okay. So fenugreek is uh, definitely, I am going to sustain to it because after my two sisters, I am having gas as a perpetual problem every day. I don't know. I'm not able to overcome it. So it's very helpful for me. And mm -hmm. what about somebody asked for joint pain, if they can add something in their tea? Well, you know, you don't have to add something more to this for treating joint okay. pain, just doing this because this starts to detoxify the body. Okay. And you may in the beginning... Um, notice a little bit more joint pain. People usually say, why am I having more of the symptoms? And because in the first one to two weeks, you're going to detoxify, which means okay. your body is starting to mobilize. Now those toxins that have been stored in the fat cells, it's yeah. going to start mobilizing them. So in the beginning, it's going to feel like the toxins are actually like going, going up. And in a sense they are because they're getting released. But then okay. after one to two weeks, you'll notice that the joint pain starts to go down. Sometimes if there's not a lot of toxins in the system, the joint pain will go down immediately. But for people who have done this tea and they are still having joint pain, so only if they are still having joint pain, they can also add one teaspoon of celery seeds. Okay. Celery seeds. Okay. Yes. Celery seeds. Celery seeds actually go specifically to the joints to help to remove toxins. But I'll okay. tell you that of the majority of my patients who have joint pain, yeah. the majority of them do not have to add anything more because this really is enough. Okay. But still in case. Because, in case. yeah. Uh, and uh, somebody has asked about, because it's COVID time, how we can, how Ayurvedic thing can help us treat anxiety and depression or insomnia in that way. Oh, this is a great question. So yeah. another thing that I was so surprised by as a neurologist was again, how much of get gut health determined mental health. I mean, it's huge, huge. Yeah. And, you know, even though I'm not a psychiatrist, because as a neurologist, you see a lot of psychological comorbidities with a neurological conditions. Yeah. I could not believe how many patients had anxiety, depression for 20, 30 years, that when we started working on their gut, their anxiety just went down so much. So in Ayurveda, we always say first work on the gut because your microbiome, the bacteria and other organisms that are sitting in your gut, they will secrete neurotransmitters. And actually 90% of your serotonin, which is the hormone, the neurotransmitter you need to feel good comes from the gut. See, most people don't need, they don't even realize that 90%. So first start on that. And then there's other herbs, you know, we talk about this in the prime too, but herbs like Brahmi and Ashwagandha, they're amazing for helping to regulate, you know, things like anxiety, but always first start with the gut and then you can add those in. Okay, so Brahmi and Ashwagandha can be added in yes. that case. And uh, uh, we have a question here. So any advice for, uh, sorry, Virendra Juneja is asking, any advice for tinnitus patients facing vertigo and balancing problems? Yes, no, absolutely. So again, you know, even though we look at all of these as, as separate things, we always first start with gut health because as soon as you fix that, like 80% of the issues either go away or they are significantly reduced. Okay. So I would first recommend, you know, starting with the tea, just with the three seeds. And okay. then the other part though of tinnitus, it's keeping the energy from moving upward, keeping the heat from going upward and pulling it downward instead. And so you want to do things that are grounding. And so one of the things that it's so easy to do, and, you know, people always laugh because these are all like the, the desi remedies that like Americans just, they, they yeah. love them because they're totally unfamiliar with them. 
But, you know, uh, many of us, when we hear this, we might even think like, my grandmother used to do that. Um, you know, you take some ghee and you just massage your feet with ghee at night. And that helps to, yeah, that just helps to pull the energy down. And you can just put a pair of socks on. But yeah, just doing ghee at night, um, it will help to pull that energy downward. And that's what helps with vertigo. Okay. That's really nice. And just in case this is out of the box, but we have, uh, I mean, ghee as a substitute for massaging in general for babies also or for kids or for us. Is it okay? Is it healthy? Recommended? Absolutely. No, there's many of the Ayurvedic um, massage oils that incorporate ghee. Now, oftentimes when we're doing the whole body, we'll use um, other oils like uh, sesame oil or mustard oil or coconut oil. But you can add ghee to that. And again, it just depends on your body type. Um, okay. But yeah, you can definitely, you know, and, and ghee, I don't usually put like on the whole body because it's, it's something heavy. It's something very, very heavy. So only on the feet to help with the grounding. But another great place to use ghee is your face. I mean, if you want to prevent premature aging, um, you know, I use one um, Ayurvedic uh, preparation at night that it, the main ingredient is ghee and then different essential oils and Ayurvedic herbs. But you just put some ghee on your face at night and it'll regenerate overnight. Really? Okay. Yeah. That, that's, I think, great advice. And so, I mean, so pocket friendly. We we go to brands and I think this is beneficial. So I think... No, very popular. Up. You know, and even a quick, a quick recipe for that is just... Um, Add some lavender essential oil okay. into just a small jar of ghee, you know, okay. and let it let it melt so the whole thing in, incorporates. And you can use that as your night cream. It's phenomenal. Okay. Okay. So lavender oil and some mm -hmm. ghee at mm -hmm. night. Okay. That's really such a good advice. And I think we have got the advice for uh, tinnitus and vertigo. And Karishma here is asking how exactly I would define gut health. Would I define gut health? Like, like the way I think you told us about it, like, you know, there are issues with your gut, but somebody who's, who thinks he's or she's normal, but uh, uh, let's, 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 let's look at that for a second. Cause most people who think they're normal, let's just define what normal has become in our age today. Normal has become having anxiety. Normal has become not being able to sleep well at night. Normal has become not you know, feeling heavy after you eat, that after every meal, you don't feel light and, you know, um, energetic. Normal has become waking up um, exhausted. So when we say normal, then normal means you probably have gut issues because the majority of the people with the way that they're living today have gut issues. Now, the difference is most what people are saying is, well, in your teens and your 20s, you can manage it to some extent. But then once you hit your 30s, especially for women, because that's when hormonal changes start happening. And for men, it's usually once they hit their 40s, what they call normal, like in their 20s, suddenly catches up to them. So when we say normal, normal means having gut issues in today's society. It's the abnormal, unique ones who don't. <laughs> yeah, you're very, very right. Because everything is actually not normal and we consider it normal so uh, we have one more question from garima she's saying that she's 30 plus she's 31 years old and she had uh, uh, done a delivery in uh, she had just given birth to a baby in when she was 30 a year ago so ideally and by normal delivery ideally she should have lost her weight but she's just uh, not able to and she is rather on the heavier side is it inflammatory weight how does she know that and uh, because she's eating normal roti dal yeah. sabji, and she's eating the normal meals and no junk food she's asking why is it my weight still with me yeah so this is so we talked you know again just about the overall digestive health and after delivery the woman's body and the entire body gets weaker and, you know, and, and this is something that I really struggled with first when I went into Ayurvedic medicine, but we have to look at what are the ages that women would normally deliver? You know, we become of reproductive age, like in our teenage years. And it's yeah. like from our teenage years into our twenties, that is when our body is brimming with hormones. Like we have an excess almost of hormones. And then as you start going into your thirties, your hormones naturally begin to decline. So, yeah. and I'm not against having children at a later age. I'm just saying you have to understand the state of your body because 
our bodies, you know, for women, we have very cyclic bodies. And if we don't understand our cycles, we, we, we're just, we're working too hard to bring balance into our lives. So after pregnancy, automatically you go through a stage of hormonal imbalance. Now there's a rising hormonal imbalance that we've never really seen before at the numbers that we're seeing now, that's estrogen dominance. Estrogen okay. dominance is happening because of the excessive amount of stress that women are being exposed to. And also because there are so many toxins that stimulate estrogen receptors. Okay? okay. So we have this new state of hormonal imbalance, estrogen dominance, that just packs on weight. And once you have estrogen dominance, you will not lose the weight until okay. your hormones become balanced. And so okay. doing, doing the prime will help towards that. But then there's okay. other things that we add, like adding things like chia seeds. Chia seeds naturally increase um, progesterone. So doing ground chia seeds, doing like a tablespoon of ground chia seeds a day. Um, that's a healthy way to start to balance your, your hormones. So the, the hormonal aspect is really, really important for weight loss. Once, people, once women start hitting their 30s and then definitely in their 40s and then it's an absolute must in their 50s, you cannot maintain your weight without addressing hormone, hormonal balance. And it doesn't mean going on hormone replacement therapy. Hormone replacement therapy does not necessarily balance your hormones. And this is a very frustrating part of HRT. Okay. So that's very interesting. So I think after 30s, girls should look after their hormonal balances and get to themselves checked. And uh, you said chia seeds are the one which you can have every day a spoon to just start regulate, which help in regulation. Yes. Of the if, if for most women in their like 20s and 30s, you start having signs of estrogen um, uh, dominance. In addition to doing the prime, I'll usually just put them on about a tablespoon of chia seeds. When we start seeing other dysregulation, then we'll start doing other things. But this is a really easy, simple step. But there's two things that are very important for doing the chia seeds. Number one, they have to be ground. If you don't grind them, you don't get the hormonal benefit. Oh, so you okay. have to, yeah, you have to grind them for the hormonal benefit. You don't grind them, you get the fiber benefit. You grind them, you get the hormonal benefit, and they should be soaked overnight. You can just soak them in water overnight. And then you can have it, you know, in your cereal or your breakfast, however you want to have it. I usually make mine because, you know, I'm 46. And so at this age, it's, it's all about hormonal balance. And so I do both chia and flaxseed for hormonal balance. That is my breakfast. I do a cereal, a hot cereal with both um, chia and flax. So you grind them and then uh, first you overset so them overnight. Them. Yeah. And, and that's how you get the benefits. And I can't tell you how many women, you know, like in their 40s, 50s, 60s, where they say, I don't know what happened to my body, like from perimenopause to menopause, like I'm just packing on like 10 pounds every single year. Like I, I cannot figure out what is happening. And the second that we, we always work with the gut first, absolutely important. If you do not have gut health, you will not have any other health. We work with the hormone, I mean, sorry, the gut first. And then the next step is hormonal balance. And then once we get those hormones into balance, they're just like, where is this weight even going? Because a lot of it is um, what I call fake fat, which is just lymphatic fluid that has accumulated, which happens when your progesterone goes down. So if you don't understand the science behind it, you, I, you yeah. will just be so frustrated. And you'll think, I, you know, because you can't get to a point where you're eating nothing. If you yeah. eat nothing, your metabolism will go down, not up. Okay. Okay. So just don't do that. Starve yourself. It's not the solution. Yes. Okay. I think that's a great advice. And now moving on, we have the second segment allotted to your second book, which is about sound medicine. And uh, you have recently, uh, you know, released this book. And uh, you have, uh, we really want to know what is this book about and what have you told us in this book? <laughs> so what's interesting about this book is, you know, it's really, I mean, it's probably been exposed to mantras growing up, right? Either going to temple or going somewhere like everybody in India, but nobody in India knows the value of them. <laughs> yes, yes, and so, yes. So this happened last time. My son also says Om Namah Shivai before going to bed. And uh, when I was researching, I was like, oh my God, it has more. We just do it for the religious purpose of connecting yes. to God. But has any other health benefit i was just so amazed that i couldn't resist oh. myself to this session and bring this <laughs> to in front of every month yeah so yeah please tell us how how are this mantra chanting 
how can they help us what is the so science just like happened? in the just like in the prime i was so shocked to learn about how advanced ayurveda was by focusing on the gut and in, in the U, in the us you know in modern medicine we call it focusing on the gut microbiome which is like the latest thing i was so shocked when i started doing the research in sound and mantra in particular science behind mantras that mantras are working on a quantum level and we can't even understand what the ancient sages you know in india and around the world what they were explaining about mantras because when we read those things we think that they're talking metaphorically we don't think that they're actually talking in scientific terms but without quantum physics you cannot un- even understand that mantras are a quantum effect meaning they have a field effect and what that means is that you're going even beyond just the biology or the psychology but you're going to the subtlest levels of reverberation from which all matter actually emerges and that is the source of all healing energy whether it's mental or physical and if you don't really understand the value of doing mantras and also the correct way of doing it yeah. um you're missing out on such an important aspect of physical mental balance that you know yes it is a spiritual practice or you know in certain religions it's part of the religious practice but until you understand it as an actual technique or a tool you won't really open up to the full benefit and this is this is a big part of kind of the next wave of um energy medicine or or medicine even in the world, is understanding techniques and you know pulsed electromagnetic fields and what i found is that sound actually generates these you know can direct electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic fields in our bodies is what determines biology So in the book I talk about, you know, um explaining this both from an ancient perspective as as from a a modern um medical as well as a quantum physics perspective. And I didn't understand even though I I knew it was possible and this was something that, you know, we were seeing like even in in the center in India um that you can heal using mantras and most people have heard about this that you can heal during using mantras. I couldn't understand the biology of it. And now that I understand the biology of it, I can't tell you like I I'm such a huge believer in ayurvedic medicine, but my consumption of herbs has gone down by I would say 90% once I understood how to use mantras because now I just use sound in place of herbs. I mean that is a very oh. cost effective way to approach your health. <laughs> my god, my god, this is phenomenal i think yeah. so as you said mantras go to the level of uh, i mean subatomic level where the whole matter and you know because yeah. i'm a bi- uh, biomedical student i can talk in those language but as a common person i will just say i mean vibrations do have significance i mean yes. so and chanting mantras create an aura or vibrations around us and that help us to heal i think so what we are trying to uh reach to the common man in the common language is this so how uh, like what is the correct way as you said it has to be done in a correct way so is there duration and posture what what is the correct There's, way of- yeah no it's a very very good question and if you don't mind i just wanted to add something um you yeah. made me think about um what we're finding out now is that everything emits a sound everything and so even medications yeah. emit a sound so if you apply a special amplifier to different medications they will emit a certain frequency now when you apply that frequency to water and then have somebody just drink that water that water will have the same effect that the medication did okay now our body is mainly just water and so water has this really interesting capacity of holding the memory of vibration into the water molecules and so okay. when we when we say that you know this is very very proud i mean that on a fundamental level we are actually designed to absorb uh you know uh, sound and so when we talk about the correct way of doing it first of all it should be done at, at least i would say about 20 minutes a day you know 20 minutes a day 
Um, and there's so many different uh, mantras, like Om Namah Shivaya is fine. And there's mantras for all different traditions. So it's not that you have to use something that comes from India. There's mantras literally from every place on the planet. Um, okay. But bija mantras are extremely powerful because they're just a seed sound. They're just a resonant frequency. And so I'm a big fan of bija mantras. But, you know, if you're able, again, you don't want this to be too rigid, but if you're able, aligning the spine, like just sitting up is important because that is how you allow the energy to actually move because it will actually move through the body. So if you're able to, you know, sit up when you do the practice that does it's, it's just a, it's a mechanical and energetic thing of allowing things to move and shift but okay. the other part and this was the part that I have to be honest I didn't get until I understood the science of it and you know yeah. this is just me I'm kind of like a geek I'm a little bit nerdy when it comes to these things even approaching you have to know the logic I, I ha yeah you know I, I'd say I don't have to know it but I am thrilled when I know it Devotion is such a big part of this. And I always thought that this was, again, just a spiritual thing. No, it's the electromagnetic field that gets generated by the heart. You know, literally the area that we associate with the heart, it generates, it's a, it's a huge, huge, huge pumper of electromagnetic fields, massive, much bigger than the mind. Okay. When you access the field that is located in literally the area of the physical heart and associated with the feelings of devotion, compassion, or love, that actually triggers our physical heart to send signals to the brain that bring it into a state of total relaxation and receptivity. And so if you are not connecting to the heart, and if you look at the way that the ancients described, like the, the heart chakra, the design in the heart chakra is yeah. also in the middle of the design of the crown chakra, because this is how you open up that center. And in the process, you are regulating the mind. And then what does the mind regulate? Well, every single cell in your body. So yeah. if you're just doing it like, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, like, you know, yeah, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're generating some of the vibration, but you're not actually plugging it in I, to yeah, the actual right. source. And yeah. when you do that plug in where you drop down and sometimes it helps people to have like a focus, you know, on the heart, but it's really just the feeling of devotion, of love, of compassion, however you do that, okay. however you want to connect with that. When you do that, you have something that is, it's going to be, you know, either in your son's generation or his children's generation, this is going to be the secret weapon for human well-being is when people yeah. realize that these emotions that we consider spiritually advanced are actually biologically advanced emotions. Okay. You know, they generate a biology in the body. Yeah, it's, I think I'm just, it's so amazing to know that, you know, it's not only the spiritual boundaries that we, uh, it's, uh, like you said, it's the next bio uh, I mean, not bio weapon, it's the next, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's the next uh, uh, secret to uh, your overall well-being. So, as you said, 20 minutes of meditation, I mean, mantra chanting, you know, uh, posture back straight and letting that energy flow so do you think like an amateur who is a beginner who will try the mantra chanting but with at least this much devotion that this is gonna beneficial be with me not if anything else yeah. so uh how do what is the simplest mantra that one can start reciting and uh yeah sorry so when you say amateur, just so you know, most all of my patients are amateurs. I mean, my patients are people, you know, before my practice was predominantly in the US, now I see people around the world, but they're all amateurs. I mean, we have this misunderstanding in India that you have to be a yogi to do this yeah. right. And you don't, you just have to be a human being because we're designed for it. It's kind of like saying, is somebody who's an amateur eater, will they know what to do when you put food in their mouth? Yeah, because we were designed for it. You know, yeah. we were actually genetically designed to incorporate sound into our physiology and the truth is that we're doing it all the time we're just not doing it consciously sound affects us all the time we're just yeah. not using sound in a conscious way to affect us in the ways that we want so of course this absolute simplest mantra on the planet is just om right 
And so you can start first. Um, if somebody is really, really new to it, you can just say it out loud, but eventually you want to do it quieter until it becomes silent. But oh. my favorite mantra, which I would love to share with you, is um, the chakra mantra, which is the bija mantra connected to the mantra Om Namah Shivaya for all of the chakras. And this actually helps to balance the male and female, or what we say in India, the Shiva and Shakti energies. And this yeah. is a really powerful mantra that just opens up all of the energy centers. And so um, I'm happy to, to chant that for you if you would please, like. Please, go ahead. Okay. So it goes, Hari Om Nam Lam Mam Vam Sim Ram Vam Yam Yam Ham Shiva Om Swaha. And, I, and I'm happy to send you the instructions for that if you like, so you can share with your please, viewership. Please. Yes, uh, Ross. It's it's really when you were reciting it, we I also got to know how to say the mantra. I mean, the way you were saying. So this is also very helpful. And if you can share us the link with it, so this is one of the bija mantras that you are saying that if you do that. Yes, this is actually a combination of all of the bija mantras for all of the chakra systems in the body. And I, this is one that I do every single day. For me, this is like taking an energetic bath, just like you wouldn't leave the house without taking a bath. Like I don't leave the house until I do this mantra because it just clears everything. And then the more and more you do it, you'll see, you know, things start to come up. Old stresses start to come up. Energy starts to actually move. Okay. And somebody is asking, should we do the mantras in the morning or we can do it any time? I always say it's more important that you just do them. It's just, you know, that if, if we start getting too picky, like first just figure out when can you do them? I do them in the morning just because there is a time in the early morning. This is why I wake up. I usually wake up around 4 a.m. Because there's a time in the early morning where you get the greatest benefit from doing a mantra meditation. But okay. I think oftentimes when we start a new practice, if you aim for perfection, you never do it. Like, no, you know, somebody who's waking up like at 7 a.m. isn't suddenly going to wake up at 4 a.m. to do a mantra practice. So I say, just do it whenever you can. For me, I, I do it in the morning because, first of all, I wake up early, it's quiet, and I get the benefit of that time. But for me, it changes the way that I go through my entire day. I'm a different person after I do that mantra meditation. You know, I have a different awareness throughout the day. And so for me, it's like, it just removes the obstacles in my day ahead of time and everything is just smoother. Okay. All right. And uh, somebody, uh, so they're all asking to share the instructions of this mantra that you just recited, which we'll ask you to share and we'll upload it. And yeah, somebody absolutely. asking is Brahm, uh, Brahmari Pranayam chanting Om is beneficial for reducing time, tinnitus. Um, so there actually are different mantras for different conditions. Um, and so like there's specific bija mantras that are for like the ears or different bija mantras for this or that. But what I always recommend is that unless you've had like a formal evaluation to do a mantra like the one that I've given you, because that actually opens up all of the chakras. So the challenge is you can have a symptom like up here, but it could actually be coming from like an issue in your gut or an issue with the root chakra. And so the reason yeah. why I like this chakra mantra is you're, you're, it's a very balanced mantra and you're doing every single layer, every single level. Because what can happen is, you know, and, and most of the mantras that we know, you know, like in India, those are all very, very balanced mantras. But there are certain mantras that, like, for example, if you just did the bija mantra for only one of these chakras, eventually it's going to create an imbalance. So okay. that's why I, I really recommend, like, for any physical ailments, or for any mental dysfunction, you know, do do this chakra mantra because it addresses everything. Okay. Yeah. So somebody's asking for their stress and anxiety. So as you said, this is the balanced chakra mantra, and we can decide this without any. Uh, this won't create any imbalance, and this can be exactly. done. Exactly. Yeah. So and is, all of the mantras that I give in the book, like the Saraswati yeah. mantra, is also I'm is the Bija mantra. I'm is the Bija mantra for Saraswati. That's a great mantra for stress and imbalance. I give, in the book, I give all the mantras that are like, you know, you can easily give without 
having to have like an individual evaluation. And so people can choose, but the reason why I just, I love this one in particular, especially once you start doing it, you you actually feel the physical effects of it. I mean, you can feel the energy just be, being balanced. And because it, it addresses all five of the, you know, elements in, in, in the universe and in nature and in our bodies, um, yeah. it's just, it's just something to help create harmony. Yeah. So this is very interesting. And for those who are joined, who are watching it live and who will be watching it later. So you can, uh, always, uh, reach Dr. Kulri, uh, on her Facebook page where she's very, very active and, uh, uh, you can always buy her books, The Prime and The Sound Medicine, which will solve, I think, which will answer almost all of your questions. And uh, Dr. Kulreet, this also brings us to the last segment. We, you have opened up, a, uh, you've set up a, a center in Tamil Nadu, Chininarayani Holistic Center. So who can come there? And uh, I mean, setting up these centers, is it actually very important to come close to nature to heal yourself? We had two questions on that, yeah. No, it's a very, very good question. So um, unfortunately, right now, because of what's happening with COVID-19, yeah, um, the people I, who can get there are the people later, who can. Later. Yes. <laughs> so if you can <laughs> physically get there, and of course, right now, you know, um, we're, not, we're not doing the treatments because of the government regulations. Um, yeah. But at the center, we focus predominantly on um, Siddha medicine. Uh, okay. which is very, very powerful. I always say, you know, kind of, I, I feel that where Ayurveda ends, that's where Siddha medicine, you know, begins because it's really going more into the quantum phenomenon, the use of mantras, the use of yantras, all of this for healing, the use of dharma therapy for healing. And so it's really, it's, it's open to whoever feels that they need, you know, balance in their life. And the center itself is located um, among a forested area because being in nature is extremely important and for several okay. reasons not just having the clean air not just seeing the greenery which is very very balancing just the colors but also having the sounds of nature you know in, okay. in, in America I live by the um, the ocean and I came here to do my book tour and then got stuck here because of the pandemic um, but when I went back to the ocean and I just heard the sounds of the ocean, I mean, I was just immediately immersed in such a deep state of peacefulness. And so nature provides, I mean, mantras are sounds of nature that were perceived by the siddhas, by the rishis. And so these sounds of nature are naturally being produced by the natural orchestra, you know, that is out there when you go out into a forest or, you know, wherever you can get it. So it's really, really important to have um, exposure, you know, to nature. To be close to nature. Yeah. Okay. So this is, I mean, we have got so much information from you and I think there are, I think I can't, uh, I really want to have more sessions with you for knowing the doshas, for knowing the chakras and for oh, uh, wonderful. Getting, but and now, well, and now you, 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 you've uh, set up an Instagram account for me, so I have, I have no excuses. Now I know how to do this. <laughs> yeah. So I think the more we dig into it, the more the holistic life and the therapies that you have been telling us, I think there's such an, uh, the whole world is coming towards them because they're all natural and they were always there, but we need to go back to them. And uh, your books. And, and it's ours. That it's, awareness it's, again in the Western world. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's ours. It's our tradition. I'm so amazed at how yeah. the West has embraced it. But I'm like, hey, this is our tradition. You know, this yeah, is something yeah. we're exporting to the entire world. Why are we not importing it? You know, why is the rest of the world benefiting from the knowledge that was generated, you know, by India? So I would, I would love to do that. And I just wanted to let everybody know that um, Sound Medicine has been published in the U.S. It's coming out in India in August. So in August, it will be available in India as well. Okay, the sound medicine. Yes. Yeah. All right. And uh, but uh, guys, you can go and buy Prime. That's available in India. And uh, we uh, anything that you have a query, you can reach out to us or Dr. Kulreet, and uh, we will surely uh, try to answer it later. Also, if you watch it, and uh, um, thank you so much. 
I think this brings us to the end of the session, which I really don't want to, but it's so <laughs> so endearing. Uh, but uh, I have to end the session now, and uh, we'll can't thank you enough for uh, being so kind enough to do this session with us and enlighten us with all this wealth of information that you are sharing with your books and uh, bringing. I think creating so much awareness, rebouncing back with that awareness that was lost somewhere. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gurith. We, it was such a pleasure talking to you. Oh, it was my pleasure. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you, viewers, for joining us in, and uh, we will surely get back, and we'll try to get you for one more session if, in case, time permits us ever. So <laughs> we'd really like to have one more session with you. I okay. would love it. Thank you so much. I'll end the session now, and uh, really, really thankful to you. Thank you. Okay, viewers. Bye, and uh, you can watch this video. We'll share the links. We'll share the links to uh, Dr. Kudit's page, official page on Facebook, and uh, you can reach out to her and us. Thank you. We are always what we aim is to uh, bring a lot of information to you, and uh, um, maybe the, in this COVID pandemic, it can help you reach out uh, to the best of your capacity. Thank you. Signing out. <laughs>